Hey guys, what's up? This is Nazudu and you're watching DCS and today we're going to talk a little bit about how to hover with the UH-60 Lima Blackhawk, um, that new free awesome helicopter module for DCS. And I want to give you a brief instruction on how to get this thing to hover. So to get that out of the way, and I know these questions might come on uh, my controls, I have no access curves whatsoever. So you see everything is just straight. Um, in case you feel that you need some curvature, you can go to like 20% max, but I would recommend to go linear. All right, another tip that I can give you is that you invert your throttle axis, which means that when I'm pulling on my throttle, I will apply collective and pushing it forward will reduce the collective. So that mimics a little bit better the way that the actual collective works. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into it. All right, so the the Blackhawk has an FPS mode which will support you in flight and keep the helicopter straight and everything. And we will have a look at hovering with and without the FPS mode. So what we are going to do is we will apply some collective until we hit uh, 60 to 70 percent torque. That's that gauge here. And uh, the green lights will be around here to get us in the air. We will do an in-ground effect hover. If you don't know what it is, um, please have a look at Google. Uh, I will not explain this as this will make the video very long. And everything you have to know is that um, the diameter of the roller blades are around 54 feet. And um, below 50 feet, you should be in ground effect. Um, the effect will be higher the lower you are effect will create a cushion of air which can float on and what will support your hover all right so let's zoom out a little bit here and we're starting with the fps mode on uh, if the fps mode is on the helicopter will help you to keep your bank pitch and also your heading straight so we will not have to do anything with the anti-torque pedals here they will just stay stationary so what will happen when we apply collective is that the helicopter will want to go forward, which means that we have a look at the control indicator. We will have to apply back stick a little bit to counter that movement. But once we are up like five to 10 feet, um, we will have to go back with the cyclic again, um, cause then we will have to have this thing almost neutral. But let's just start the practice. All right, I'm applying power now. Pull active up. Oh, I should maybe also on pause, active pause, that helped. So, collective up. So, helicopter starts to move forward. Backward cyclic. More collective, more cyclic back. And here we go up in the air and I'm already moving the cyclic forward. All right, now I do some micro movements on the cyclic as you can see to counter the movement of the helicopter it's really hard to do that and talk and i am looking outside the right window on those um black lines on the concrete to give me a good reference of the movement of the helicopter what you can do here at this point is you can use the head trim to trim out the helicopter. I did that now. More head trim back, a little bit to the left. And yeah, I'm doing almost no movement now with my cyclic. And as you can see, it's really micro inputs that I do with the cyclic to counter the small movements of the helicopter. 
That's something that comes with practice and uh, you will get the hang of it. Alright, so let's bring her back down. Um, reset the trim. And now let's turn the FPS mode off. So what's happening now is that now the um, rotor blades will apply torque to the helicopter and will try to nose right. That's why we'll have to put some left uh, pedal input to counter that movement. Everything with the collective, uh, I'm sorry, with the cyclic is kind of the same. But um, we will have to work a little bit more to um, keep the helicopter from banking and um, moving. Alright, so same thing. Collective up, backward stick pressure, more collective, more backward. And you see it's a little bit more wobbly. And even harder to do while talking, but it's doable. All right. So what you can do now is you can go down that track. Try it really slow. Release pressure on the stick. Let the helicopter go forward. Apply a little bit more collective to keep your altitude and try to do really slow movement forwards. Go to the end of the track, maybe go a little bit faster, try to stop where you want. So let's stop at this point on here. Alright, and something else you can do <coughs> is you can turn the helicopter 90 degrees. Try to do that on a spot as good as possible. And then go sideways. Try to keep the nose steady. If you do this with FPS mode on, let's turn it on here. You can bring the pedals back to neutral and the helicopter will almost back to neutral. The helicopter will keep the heading for it. Did we turn it on? Yeah. Alright, and then stop at the pylon. And go into the other direction. Alright, what's happening here is uh, I did correct too much, but catched it. Alright, and slowly move to the other side. Right, something else I want to show you is the. Um, you will find a slot which is called uh, Slalom Slow Track Heavy and Light. Uh, on that track, we have the FPS on. Um, you can do. So we do it again. Apply. Collective, backward pressure, work forward, and then try to move this uh, slalom course. Don't go too fast, and do lateral movement. So, once you reach the first gap, stop the forward movement, go left. Nice and slow. Stop the movement forward. And go right. That's a really good practice. Alright, and at the end of this uh, course, on the last pylon, Go around.
try to control your speed. And go back on the course. Alright guys, I hope that helps you a little bit getting full control of this helicopter or whatever helicopter you want to learn. And I say thank you for watching. Consider to subscribe. Stay safe guys. Take care.